Welcome to Latitude Photography Podcast Video Edition. We're looking at some items here. This is a continuation of my previous video where I was talking all about the panoramas, the Palouse panoramas. Now we're looking at this notion of this segmentation. And so this project or this question, this reason this video is, is coming about, I should say, is because I had a question from a listener, a podcast listener. And he basically said, hey, I saw your two videos that you have on your YouTube channel about segmentation. They're all about the creation of it as it relates to post-production and stuff like that. They aren't really sure showing us exactly what we're interested in seeing when it comes to what are you thinking about when you're actually addressing, when you're coming to the scene, what are you looking for? So I've got 15 images here of the different segmentations that I've made in this series. And so it looks like Lightroom is saying on two of these, it doesn't know where the files actually reside. So that's interesting. But anyway, we will move on from here. These are definitely all Photoshop documents because where you see these framings happening, those are individual pictures that I've taken. I'm not taking a big wide angle image and then just going into Photoshop and putting these frames in there. That's totally not the case. In this particular image, this is the second image um, in the Facebook group. This might be, I don't know, might be the, uh, the first image for this series since I'm having two images where it's giving me a little bit of a hiccup on the location of the files. This one's a little bit of a blue tint, and it was done in a, a very cool you know, season. It wasn't quite winter. Uh, at least the snow wasn't on the ground yet. But we have this arching tree that's growing out from the left-hand side, arching up, going down again on the right-hand side. And then underneath it, we see this tree trunk of a, of a tree that has long been downed, and it is very broken. That, that tree trunk along the bottom is very broken. Where the tree trunk that is the main tree, that is my main subject, it is really, really uh, put together. It's from one to the other, very closely put together. And so my thought process is usually about three things I'm looking for when I'm doing a shoot like this. The first thing I'm looking for is, do I have a subject that might, let's say, make a nice panorama? I want to think initially in a panoramic sense. So we just got done talking about panoramas with the Palouse panoramas. But now on this particular side of things, do I have something that would create a good panorama, at least initially? And then what, what can I do to it? What can I, how can I capture it that brings attention to the piece that I want to bring attention to and lets everything else become more of a supporting stage, a supporting element, and everything is then subject to that main piece. So... It's, it's a little different. Let's take a look at some of these other images. I have another here where it's just pure black and white without the, the blue tonality. So there's that one. Uh, this one, I'm not sure is as successful as some of these others. This one's a little goofy. This is over at the Twin Sisters Monument in the southwest corner of Walla Walla County. And so there's, there's this tree there that I just love to shoot and frame up the Twin Sisters Monument, which is in the lower left-hand corner here. You can see I'm rotating the camera an awful lot, and it's generally wide-ish angle. It's, the metadata says 16 millimeters, so I don't usually do 16 millimeters when I'm doing a series like this, but it worked out for this one. The thing that I don't necessarily like about this image is the clumping of those dark leaves in that tree. You lose the definition of the borders of these individual frames, and... It, that just is problematic to me. And if I were to make those frames white, then you lose those definitions of those borders in the sky. So, you know, it wouldn't really work so well. It was still a good practice, and it was a good way to, to keep pushing this forward. This is definitely coming from many, many years ago. Let's take a look at the date on this. This Photoshop file was worked on December 20, 2011. So that was a long, long time ago. And it was probably shot just a little bit before that. I don't think I spent too much time sitting on this one. All right, this next image is also from that same area. In fact, it might even be the same tree. It's just a different approach to it. And so you can see I'm zooming in I, at about 100 millimeters. I'm only focusing on the tree itself and 
largely these frames are straight, but I have two that are kind of sort of angled a little bit. This also comes from 2011. So, you know, I'm still kind of experimenting, still kind of growing in this whole idea. What do I want to do with this series? How do I want, how, how can I treat these subjects and bring them, bring them forth? All right. So I mentioned the idea as, as a thought process, this idea of something to do with this whole notion of a panorama, all right? And then we have this whole idea of, okay, what about the subject? How can I take that subject and how can I piece it together? How can the subject be the the glue that holds the image together, even though they're all separate pieces? It might feel like Polaroids landing on top of each other or, or just whatever. How can I make that stronger? How can I, how can I tie that together? And so I'm looking purposely for that parallax adjustment. I'm not looking to make things perfect like you do in a pano. I'm looking for something that I can break, but yet then piece back together. And that's where these different elements in the background, they become shifted and they become less aligned. They're totally not perfect. And that's one thing I just really like about this process is it gives me that that notion that, that I'm going for with that. This next one is comes to us from Idaho, also in 2011 is when the Photoshop files worked. This one, I decided, okay, I need to take a slightly different approach. And so I mounted, I remember very specifically, I mounted the camera uh, very firmly, if you will, on the tripod, and I wanted to keep everything 100% level, 100% straight. And I was only going to be separating things out you know, left, right, up, down, whatever. But then you can see also I cropped in further and I sized the frames differently. And so I have a, a weird thing going on. So in that main framing element up at top, it has a certain width. Down at the bottom, it's narrower. So I, you know, behind the one image that's uh, on top of it here on the left side, I did something else there and I, I messed with things. But those main roots that are connecting to the stump, they are all aligning perfectly. And then, of course, I was experimenting differently with the the borders as well, giving it kind of a kind of a shadow edge, burnt edge feel kind of a thing. A total of four different frames brought together to create this one overall piece. And I really liked how this turned out. But again, it still wasn't. It just needed something a little more, and I needed to push. A, a, just a little more with this series and this this idea of how I'm growing in this series and what's happening here in this series. All right, this next image, same idea, same lens, keeping it very level. Everything is just 100% level. And I was wanting to focus on this idea of, again, that I, that notion of the subject and what can I do in order to portray that subject and glue that subject together and let the surrounding elements be the supporting stage. Now, this is also a thing, since I'm on a 100 millimeter lens with this image, I, and fi, f5.6, and I'm not too far away, so I have some shallow depth of field, the focus point changes from frame to frame, and so I want to focus and um, provide that focus on the element that's important in that individual frame. And so I'm not letting it just go blurry from one frame to the next. That's also part of this. In this one, I would have some depth otherwise. And that's also something that helps create that continuity for that subject. And this one, I, th I think, is coming together really well. This particular image, this next image, is a brilliant yellow tree. I think it's a sycamore tree. It's coming from Walla Walla. This was done, in, uh, let's see, it was worked in Photoshop last on November 2, 2012. Or at least, I've, I'm sorry, that's the capture date that I'm reading. And so... This image is, I think, one of the things where I, I started to sort of spread my wings a little bit. And that's be, I say that because things are well aligned. Those branches are well aligned, but I also am finally using color. This is the first one I ever have ever done where I felt comfortable saying color is, is good. And, of course, it's a monochromatic color with all that yellow, but color is good and it works and everything segments out perfectly or at least near perfectly. But I decided to make them square crops. 
as I was walking under the tree and I was looking up and I was like, ooh, look at this branch and how it's kind of coming over me because uh, it's literally directly over my head. I was just like, oh, this is very nice. And so I shot it in, you know, click, 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 click as I'm going across. But in post-production, I decided, you know, this would really benefit, I think, from square frames. And I think it came out really good. So we have this anchoring element that is the tree trunk. We then have the branch coming out and splitting off, splitting off, branching off, and transitioning from the weight of the tree trunk to the airiness and the delightfulness that is that brilliant yellow color. One thing I think that's certainly going to be important in a, in a series like this Definitely you want to be manually exposing, and you want a consistent exposure across the entire thing, just like you would do when you do a panorama. But when it comes to aligning these things, since you're a lot more freeform in your shooting practice, you want to be able to nudge those around in Photoshop. And so what I like to do is give myself a little bit of wiggle room. In this case, it worked out really well because I cropped to square, but I was able to give myself that extra wiggle room of that overlap, and it worked out really well. Another thought process to really be thinking about, I said there's a couple. The, the element, the, the subject itself, if it's on a specific plane, so it has the same distance from you as, as you, know, you know, everything in that subject is the same distance from you, I think that works a little easier, a little more easily. Uh, when I go back to this most re this other one here that I was talking about, where we do have some depth that would otherwise be noticeable in the shot, i.e. depth of field, had this been one solid frame, or had I not readjusted focus, then we have the potential for, I guess, just you know some some other issues going on. So that's why this was another challenge. And where when I decided to focus on keeping things, making sure they they exist in the same plane across the field, that made my life a little easier. And I was fairly pleased with how that came about. All right, this next one, I went back to Twin Sisters. And this one comes from May 25, 2013. And with this one, it was really about the simplicity of the clouds, the, well, the, the structure and then the clouds. And so being a wide angle, roughly 26 millimeters, it didn't have... You know, everything's far away. It didn't have that, that problem of, oh, is it in the right plane or not? You know, do I have this feeling of depth in my naturally found in my subject? It wasn't an issue with this one. So it was all about just extending the sky and having these little things, you know, what angle do I want to put it at? And as you can kind of guess from looking at the image, each frame that's behind it actually included the corner of the Twin Sisters. So it was super duper easy to line up in Photoshop. I then just placed them behind and, and kind of gave me this kind of attitude, this kind of look to it. All right, this next one, one of my favorite subjects, of course, Plues Falls. And initially I look at this and it doesn't quite feel like the falls is tall enough. It almost feels like I compressed it a little bit, but I'm um, pretty sure I didn't do that. It's just that's the way it kind of sort of feels. This is a, a rated 198 feet. And so you can kind of see there's a little bit uh, in the top frame, there's some people there on the edge. And so you can kind of get a sense, okay, if those people are roughly almost six feet tall, you're looking at that scale and you're like, yeah, okay, that's, that, that's about right. <laughs> it looks pretty good. Um, with this one, you know, it was really important for me to say, okay, I've got this energy of the water flowing down. And in order to make it super cohesive, I wanted to really slow down the shutter speed. And so we're dealing with about a one second shutter speed here. And that allows the water to go super silky smooth. When you get down to the bottom, uh, you still have a little bit of, you know, definition down there. But as it relates to the, the actual vertical falls itself, it's really super silky. And that made it really easy to align whatever was happening in that waterfall and then it makes it easy for the eye to just transition from one frame to the next and, and and i knew that would happen and then of course with the contrast of textures from the basalt rock to the really flowing water to the depths of the pool below we've got lots of good things as a normal composition going in it's just when we're dealing with these different segments we still want to give that eye something easy to follow, easy to transition from one thing to the next. And 
that I, I think that longer shutter speed allowed that to happen. Because if I didn't have that longer shutter speed, I've been there plenty of times, I know that it's going to, the image, or I should say the water is going to have different undulations. If I were to go with a, a sixth of a, whoops, if I were to go with a sixth of a second or something like that, uh, it might have different undulations. It might not line up just perfectly. Whereas if I extend it out to a second like this, then everything just phew, totally flows out and it's, and it's looking real good. All right, this next one comes to us from an old tree farm that I, I believe no longer exists in Boardman, Oregon. Super simplistic, only two images. And you can see on the one, I kind of sort of cropped it. And when I was initially thinking of a panoramic when I actually shot this, that it would be a seamless transition panoramic. But when I got into post-production and I saw it in Lightroom, I was like, no, wait a second, what if I did this? And then I just gave it this little crop assembled this in Photoshop. I was like, yeah, this is nice. I like how this came together. So super simple, just two frames. Uh, the subject is right smack dab in the middle. And then you have the receding tree trunks in the background with all of that fog and mist and whatnot going on. And then with all those yellow leaves there on the, on the ground, it gives that an interesting texture and an interesting color. And then out of this main trunk that we're focusing on, you have this one single little branch with a few green leaves still on it. Tiny, tiny, tiny little branch coming out. And it you know, suggests a little bit different section of life and growth with all these other leaves that are on the ground. And we know it's in the fall. But where are these green leaves coming from? So there's this little you know dialogue happening here. But the simplicity, that's what I was going for on this one. All right, this next one is actually a very much an overview. It's uh, Plitvis Lakes National Park. And with this one, you know, this, this scene is very popular, very common. And I have one of this scene without the segmentation. But when I was there, it was just like, oh, what if I were to break that apart? Here, I have this element, this very strong element that will lead the eye of the viewer from one place to the next very succinctly, very distinctly, whatever you want to call it. And so, you know, that's probably the final thing that I want to encourage you to look for is if you want to do something like this, you got to have that something that ties it all together. You know, I think I've said that before already, but I really want to emphasize that whatever that something is, that is what holds it all together. That's what makes the image, the collection of images, the embodiment of this segmentation effect. That's what makes it work. That's what brings it all together. And that's the the biggest reason why I like that anyway. All right, so this one um, we saw, it, it, it's linked in the show notes uh, for the putting this together in Photoshop. This big, huge upturned tree, this, this root system, uh, it's found at Shore Acres State Park there along the Oregon coast. And as I was kind of tooting along, I was just like, whoa, this thing is amazing. And it was all in one plane and it had so many different things going out that would be able to, you know, just be that thing or be that structure, that whatever it is that draws the eye and, you know, you start in the center and you move out to the, to the outer edges. And it makes it feel too like you have a series of prints just stacked on top of each other. And of course, that's part of the attraction for me with this series. But uh, I liked this one because it with so many different pieces and so many different roots, and it just went everywhere. So this is probably the most complex one that I've done. I have thought, however, it might be nice to try this one all over again and maybe do it with fewer images. But, you know, I just have to get out there and, and try it and see if I can make that work. The thing about it, though, there is just so much... Th these things are going at so many different angles, I'm not convinced that that would actually work. I'm not convinced that that is going to be successful. It's just as I was putting it together in post-production, I was like, maybe. And so it's worth it to try it. If I ever get back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it another try, which I know I'll get back there. The Oregon Coast is like one of my favorite places ever to shoot. So I'll get back there eventually. All right. This one has a capture date of August 11, 2019. So not too long ago. This one is a little bit different in that it's a tree with a root running along the lower portion of the image. And so the root, you have a lot of connection. The tree trunk where it meets the root is a little bit disjointed. And then as the tree goes up and up and up into the sky, 
it also reaches down to the lower right hand corner area, but I don't have a connection image that brings that together. So overall, and these are also uh, square cropped and there's no rotation on these images. So overall, you do have a separation there. I still like it though. I still think this comes together well. This is from Scott's Bluff there in, um, at, at the Scott's Bluff Monument uh, in, in Nebraska. And I was just tooling along with the family. This is on our family road trip. And we only went to Scott's Bluff because I really wanted to go. And the wife was like, really? And I said, yeah. I mean, it's just so cool. A lot of history there, et cetera. And just tooling along. Didn't have much time there. But I saw this and was like, bingo. I got to make it. Because there's these strong lines generally all, all on the same plane. And I figured I could make it work with the eye drawing, being drawn from one of these pieces to the next and I think it worked so it came out and the last one I have here is from Alaska and it's somewhat similar to that Palouse Falls idea where it's a waterfall and we have a, a contrast in textures we have the waterfall which is again really uh, smooth and silky uh, this is only 0.4 seconds because there's just not as much water going and it just doesn't have the same, do we say undulations, the, the same flow, the same flow characteristics that Plus Falls has, where there's just lots and lots and lots of water going over. So I didn't need as long of a shutter speed to make everything go silky, to make everything just be perfectly aligned or whatever you want to call it. So those textures would line up really good. I did very the amounts though of, of the heights so the widths on each frame are the same but the heights the, on those two center images are narrower so they're a little bit more pano in their effect whereas the top and bottom images they're more of a standard framing and I think that helps break it up too because if I had those being the same height as the other ones well, the second image down and the fourth image down would kind of almost run into each other. So I needed something to separate the secondary textures, the, you know, the tundra, the, the dirt and everything else on the side. But that didn't interrupt my water flow. And so if I was bringing those secondary textures and bringing those together, I think that would have made it a little less successful of an image. And I liked how this came together a little bit better. All right, hopefully that helps. I really um, look forward to any type of feedback or anything like that that you can give me. Uh, put the you know question in the show notes down there below the video, or if you wanna hop on over to the Facebook group, that would be great. Would love to have uh, some questions coming through and some conversation coming through on that. That would be amazing. So uh, don't forget to look up the various things, especially if you're interested wanting to know more about my print course got a link down there in the show notes area and for everyone who signs up before or on uh, july 31 you will get a full year access to my latitude photography school that i'm bringing out i also want to invite you to get on to the uh, the email list for latitude photography school there's another link there and in the podcast show notes and if you get on that wait list for that, for, for the LPS, then I'm going to start sending out little tidbits of what I'm actually working on that is going to be in the, in the school. So you'll understand what it is that I'm working on more specifically, and I encourage you to sign up for that as well if you're interested in knowing more. All right, that pretty much does it, and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy shooting.